Welcome, nerds. I'm Leah, interviewing for the Netherlands International Film Festival with Project Nerd. Here with me today, I have Drew and Omar. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Thank you. Okay. All good. Um, so tell me a little bit about the film you brought to the festival. Uh, Los Perros del Barrio Colosal is a, is a piece that, um, it's a dance work that, um, I can describe it kind of like a like a wild romp um, of emotions and physicality and creative um, decision making. Um, it's kind of like an explosion um, of all things. I feel like we create. I mean, we created it during the the pandemic, which was crazy, um, and you know, like all the insecurities and anxiety and um, plus all the elements that I wanted to work with creatively, which was like uh, some of my cultural, adding some of my cultural elements to, to it. I'm from, I'm originally from Puerto Rico and uh, we grew up, uh, at least I did, um, with a lot of soap opera, which is like, you know, like everything is exaggerated and um, just like over the top. And I kind of wanted to, you know, do that. Um, like um, within the physicality and the theatricality of the piece, like really just um, go for it to the point that it's just, it's almost funny because because they just really, <laughs> the, the dancers really commit. <laughs> so I guess it's about <laughs> yeah, they commitment do. too. Mm -hmm. And so what what was the name of the film? I'm not sure if if you or I actually mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's called uh, Los Perros del Barrio Colosal. Okay. Which means, um, how can I translate, like, the dogs of the colossal neighborhood? Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work mm -hmm. in English. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. And so how, what cultural elements did you um, really focus on inserting into the film and the, the dance element of it? I feel like our, I don't feel, my culture um, is, we, we always find um, any excuses to to celebrate, to party. Um, so I, it was important for me that um, that celebration or sense of, of, of celebration was portrayed throughout the piece. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I feel like, I mean, my, my culture is loud, um, unapologetic, <laughs> um, kind of obnoxious at times. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of just wanted to like unveil that unapologetically. That's awesome. Was there um, a story that unfolded as a part of the film or um, I guess what, what do we see in terms of the, the dance and the, what the people are doing on screen? Um, well, I feel like What's really important for me as a choreographer, uh, especially at this particular time in my career, is to be able to communicate effectively with an audience. So, so I've been I've been very conscious about how to create a narrative that makes sense in the abstraction of it all. Um, mm -hmm. So it is abstract, but but it does have a lot of like day-to-day uh, -day, um, references. Uh, there's enough of those. So like audiences can like activate their own imagination and create their own stories uh, um, based on what they're seeing. Um, so instead of being like very literal about this is the story of blank, I, 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 I put uh, key points throughout the, the piece to allow the audience to create their own. That's awesome. Just before um, we you joined us, I was saying that that was one of my favorite things about dance films, uh, was that you could kind of interpret it, each person in the audience can interpret it how they, they want to in a sense. Um, so what inspired you? Have you always been a filmmaker or a dancer or what inspired you to want to make a film about dance? I feel like it's a very, it's a very niche sort of uh, film style, if you will. And so um, what is your background personally? 
Well, to be honest, I did not want to create dance films. <laughs> um, it was kind of like, I'm like, I felt like I was forced uh, because it was what people were doing. Um, so if I was going to do it, I was going to do it with Drew because we had the opportunity to work uh, many years ago uh, on a small project. And like, I was entirely in love with his work and his brain and his brilliance. So I was just like, okay, if I'm going to dig into this, I'm going to do it with him. So I call him and we talked and he said, yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> and we did like um, one project first and that was kind of like our comeback. And then um, we have this, this, this piece and I ended up loving it, but it was, it was for sure um, how can I say it? Um, nerve wracking because <laughs> like Drew couldn't be in the studio. So mm -hmm. he had to learn the whole, like study the video from, from afar, from a video that, that was watching, that was looking into the mirror. So he doesn't even have like quite the right perspective of how things are going to look like. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, and then we're going to get into the studio. Um, and we only have five hour, five hours to record the twelve minutes of dance, <laughs> mm -hmm. like in the location itself, in the shooting location. Yeah, it was it, it was quite crazy. Yeah, go go ahead. It wasn't, I, and and my I mean I have my degrees in filmmaking, but before I got into filmmaking, I had a, a little bit of dance experience, and so I was able to kind of marry those together, um, and you know successfully work with Omar on some of these projects. Mm -hmm. um, and I think yeah, one of the scary things was that. I mean, for, for you, Omar, it wasn't, there wasn't an initial intention for this to be a dance film. Like this was created to be like a live production. Um, but then of course, when COVID happened, the entire dance industry um, had to rethink how they present their work. Um, and so it, it's, it was really unfortunate because it created this fear, I think, um, amongst the community, but uh, it kind of spawned this really uh, beautiful new connection between like the dance community and the film community, um, like across like cities across the world, because it's what the dance community had to do. Everyone was completely dependent upon video. Um, so the I mean the thing with with dance films though is that um, like one of my biggest pet peeves when I watch a a movie musical or something is that it's like with with movies and with with dancing it's like the directors always uh or the editors expect there to be like this fast pace so you can constantly be like looking at different things but you have to like honor honor the dance work and in order to do that you have to just you have to like look at it at a wide angle so you can see the work happen and i feel like in so many dance films it's just like look over there and look over there and now look at this close up and this close up and it's difficult to like uh, fully appreciate and honor all the work on the choreography that like actually went into the film. Mm -hmm. So there was this, uh, this kind of uh, balance beam that we were walking on in making sure that we were honoring Omar's work, but also understanding that we were interpreting this in the new uh, element that is film and you know cinema so it was you know walking walking that tightrope of making sure it was both interesting but also uh taken seriously as a as like a dance work itself mm -hmm. yeah no and and, th and i appreciate that so much um because i feel like i don't feel it it like i feel everybody that's seen it for example if i had to apply for uh, something or show somebody the choreography, even though it's a dance film, everybody can see the choreography and they're able to to imagine it on the stage, even though we changed the perspectives and stuff, which mm -hmm. we did. We just recently performed it in Colombia and Panama, which was like also nerve wracking, um, <laughs> but very exciting stuff. So you, you said you only had five hours to do the filming. Is that, how long is the, the actual dance piece when it's not in a film or, are they, or did they end up being about the same length? 
Yeah, it's pretty much the same um, length. Um, yeah, 12 ish minutes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> that still seems like a lot. I can't imagine how many times you had to to redo that if you only had five hours to, to film the entire thing. <laughs> we had to be extremely prepared. <laughs> like we, uh, we, we, were, we worked with a shot list. Um, I mean, we did everything that you would do on like a normal film set because even on a regular film set, you have such a limited amount of time because you're renting a location, you know? So you have to um, make sure that you don't <laughs> have to stay for longer and overpay, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. And we also had to take in consideration dancers' personal itineraries. Mm -hmm. Like one, one, one of the dancers had to leave, but like the piece uses everybody from the beginning to end. Um, it was just like all, all, all around just challenges, um, <laughs> which it was, it was, of course, it, it give, gives you lots of anxiety. But it was also beautiful um, being able to see the dancers like uh, commit to the amount of work. And it was a marathon um, mm -hmm. to commit to every moment and be like, OK, we're going to go from here. And like the, them understanding that there was no time to really be like, oh, let's just have fun and like joke around. Like that day was like we didn't have barely have time to do that. Um, and also just like staying present in the moment there were there was the plan of like how drew was gonna sh uh show everything and then that like looseness of like discovering like oh what if we like do this right now and then just like being in the moment and allowing that presentness to to you know to to let us come up with new ideas right right then even though time was limited so i'm mm -hmm. very appreciative of of that and for Drew's generosity for because those legs must be <laughs> your legs were probably so tight. <laughs> yeah, I, I shoot I I shoot a lot of my dance work, probably ninety five percent of it on on my feet and I'm handheld, you know. Mm -hmm. Um so there's it's not a lot of like tripod usage because it helps create that kind of kinetic energy with the <laughs> framing and then like with the dancers. Mm -hmm. Um I mean but it honestly was like so you know, I would be in the room looking like a like a tourist in a foreign country, like taking a picture and <laughs> being like squatting and everything. But it was less on me and more so on on the dancers. Like, and on, on a film set, if you're directing an actor and you have to do take after take after take, all they're doing is just repeating a line. But I mean, when you're a dancer, imagine like playing a soccer game for five hours straight. You know, <laughs> it's uh. If, yeah, it's a, it was a lot, and they, they did a great job. Yeah, it sounds like you almost got as much of a workout as they did just holding the camera and doing all those dance movements over and over. That's... Yeah, we all had to do our stretches before and after each take. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you said that you two had worked together before. Do you have any other projects that you've worked on that you want to share with us or that you're uh, thinking of working on together? Any future plans? There's certain things that I'm still not allowed to uh, talk about publicly, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but there's a future project that I'm hoping, well, there's two, um, and it's, if schedule and budget and everything allows it, um, one is a passion project that I'm trying to um, to do with this uh, another Puerto Rican composer, uh, I want to do something like major and very big, but mm -hmm. um, we want to do it right. We want to like have like the right amount of funding, the right amount of everything, have the the perfect cast and the locations, and it's going to require traveling, and it, it's kind of like a big deal. So that's probably going to take a, its time to mm -hmm. develop. Um, and there's something coming up soon, um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> this. <laughs> Well, awesome. Is there anywhere um, that people can see the film if they want to? Or do you have like an Instagram or website where they can check out your other work? Yeah, I mean, the uh, this film that we've entered into Netherland, um, we can't put it online until we're kind of done with the festival circuit because we don't want to risk disqualification from anywhere. Um, but I think it'll probably be 
online in spring of next year. I think we're kind of going to be wrapping up festi the festival circuit by then. Um, but we do have our, our other work um, online as well. We're both working artists. Um, I'm on Instagram at Drew L. Brown. Um, and I'm also on Vimeo as well. I have some of my work there. Okay. Same. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Um, um, by I go by Boca Tuya, the name of my company. Um, B-O-C-A-T-U-Y-A. -A, um, and underscore four times. Or bocatuya.com, um, my website. And you can find like samples of my work there for theater and other kinds of um, uh, media or, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Um, everyone online, catch their film at the Netherlands International Film Festival or online next year sometime. Thank you both for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah.